Okay, um, good to see you all. Uh, we're coming to probably one of the highlights, if not the highlight of our event, uh, the Humanitarian Awards. In the past uh, three years, we've had some incredible uh, people who received these awards. Uh, recipients like our Senator Barbara Boxer, Dr. Mike Ramsey, uh, Robin Betts, and uh, just President and Vice President, President Obama, Vice President Biden, Alicia Cole. I'm gonna miss some of them, but I, I'm, these people, what we've looked for are attributes of people who've always given, always try to help with patient safety, but in the prior year, they did something that really stood out that made their efforts count even more towards patient safety. So these are not lifetime achievement awards. <laughs> these are awards for people who really made a difference in the, in the prior year, but were consistently doing the right things. So tonight is no exception. We have some incredible, uh, amazing people who've given, who are, as I say, thoughtful and full of heart every day when they approach their work, and it's made a huge difference. So we have four recipients. Uh, we're gonna do two of them together because I think their work together uh, became the push and pull to make uh, what they did possible. And uh, so, so Ariana and I are gonna announce them, talk about each one of them, have them come up, and we'll give them the award, and we'll see if they would like to say anything, and then or we welcome them too, and then we'll, we'll go on to our very next. So let me first start off. Uh, th this first person gave me an award tonight, <laughs> Dr. Patrick Conway. Uh, Dr. Patrick Conway's leadership at the Center for Medicare and Medicare Services over the last several years, but particularly in 2016, has demonstrated that with great leadership, much can be accomplished. I remember the first time I went and visited Dr. Patrick Conway, and uh, I, think, I think Dr. Mike Ramsey was with me, I think Lenore Alexander was with me, and um, maybe Dave Mayer. But we had this incredible meeting and as thoughtful and um, as much as they've dug in to do what's best for patients, they, Patrick listened to us as though we were the first people to talk about patient safety and then wanted to understand what are the areas that we are bringing to the table and encouraged us to even on areas where they were working on before to keep going, to amplify each other's voice and hopefully get more done. So, through the work they've done by using their surveyors to go and expect the things that I know you guys have implemented to improve patient safety, they've saved countless of lives. Through partnership for patients, through programs like value-based uh, uh, payments, as you heard today, they have saved 125,000 plus patients. And Last year, the work of HEN and now HENS proves that Patrick and his team have focused on creating networks and breaking down silos to promulgate progress in safety. Um, I hope he'll continue doing what he's doing for another 20 years because um, we really need him. Patrick, please come on up. We'd like to present the Humanitarian Award to you. I'll be very brief. Thank you for this very, this is much nicer than the award I gave you, <laughs> which makes me feel a little bad, but uh, this is terrific. Thank you very much. Now, I, I um, you know, this, this work is a passion, as I know it is uh, for you, Joe, so thank you for all your work and everyone in the room. Uh, we are literally working to save people's lives each and every other, each and every day. So thank you for that. I have to take a red eye back to coach basketball tomorrow, so I apologize. Um, but thank you so much. Thank it means you. a lot.
Thank you so much, Patrick. And uh, I don't think the next set of people we're going to bring up are coaching basketball tomorrow. So uh, they might be giving us a little bit longer talk. But Patrick, we're really, really indebted to you. There's so many families that, because of your work, uh, get to have fun with the rest of their families. And thank you. Thank you. So. The next person we'd like to give the Humanitarian Award um, is actually serves on our Board of Directors, Dave Mayer. Dave Mayer's leadership at MedStar Health and dissemination of the incredible research did on candor across the nation as what I truly believe is Healthcare 2.0 will move mountains and will change the whole dynamics of patient safety. This idea of action out of kindness and transparency, they've proven the value of it. And now I've heard incredible work since the article has come out, which it came out in the middle of 2016, where insurance companies are offering uh, hospitals discounts under premiums if they put in place the seven pillars that uh, Dave proved with his team that works to not only improve patient safety but reduce cost and, and hopefully it will soon be everywhere. Today when we kicked off, uh, when I helped them kick off their candor uh, meeting, um, I, I did the analogy that I think of Dave and his team uh, like Gandhi when he first began talking about his thoughts about uh, I guess India being uh, independent and he first had a few people listening then he had 500 people listening then he had 5,000 and then the entire nation I really believe as he's going out there getting the word out on candor more and more people are listening and it's going to take the country and the world by storm so Dave please come up thank you being for such an extraordinary <laughs> human being Whoa, that's heavy. <laughs> I do have a few comments I'd like to say, but thanks. Um, age is hitting me. Um, first of all, you know, thank you, Joe, and thank you to the patient safety movement for this really amazing award. Uh, when I look at Patrick, Anna Marie, and Anne, who are also receiving this award tonight, plus I look at previous year's recipients like Alicia Cole, and Robin Betts, and Mike Ramsey, and Anna Noonan, and Kai Zakharovsky, who I sat today with during the sessions, and all the others who have been selected. People have done such outstanding work in helping drive preventable deaths to zero. It, it is really quite humbling to be <laughs> included with all of them. It's my personal opinion that candor, communication, and optimal resolution is one of the most important safety programs to come along in the last 15 years. CANDOR is a patient safety program that lowers patient risk and preventable harm through open and honest communication, and it's founded in transparency. It creates a true learning culture for improvement while providing badly needed support to patients, families, and caregivers when serious safety events occur. I've been blessed to be part of a great team back at the University of Illinois in Chicago that was led by Tim McDonald. At that time, we created a program that Joe referred to known as the Seven Pillars. Tim is here this weekend as are others who helped create that program, Kelly Smith, Marty Hatley, Tom Gallagher. Through support from the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, we brought the Seven Pillars program to MedStar Health, where it became known as CANDOR. Under the MedStar Institute for Quality and Safety and the MedStar Center for Open and Honest Communication, a number of large health systems now are adopting CANDOR and starting to roll it out. Two in particular here in California, Dignity Health and Beta Health. I think Tim spends about half his life out in California the last six months. I've also been blessed that I work for a CEO who's probably the best in healthcare, Ken Samet. Ken always likes to say we have to keep one foot in the present and one foot in the future. While candor is that one foot in the present, 
My other passion is around educating the young and patient safety. That one step, that is the step that we need to be in the future. Twelve years ago, we created the Patient Safety Roundtables. Over the last six years, they have merged into the Academy for Emerging Leaders for Patient Safety. Through our team, we have now trained over a thousand young future healthcare leaders in medical school, in nursing school, in resident physicians. And in, past, in fact, the last year, that curriculum was taken to Doha Cutter and to Sydney, Australia. And so over the last six years, over a thousand have gone through this program because I really believe if we're going to change the culture of healthcare, we have to also educate the young. So, Joe, you're an amazing leader and visionary. You've built this organization on the power of commitments. And so tonight, my commitment is to ensure that we support five residents to come to this program next year. And I encourage all of you to do similar. If we do not educate the young, we're going to be going back and trying to make up for 20 years that they weren't educated the right way and what my generation lacked. So again, thank you for this great award. Two hands now. <laughs> I, I, I love the idea of bringing the residents. It's fantastic. Thank you for that commitment. I think we also have to, I heard some really good ideas about bringing board members of hospitals. And uh, maybe we'll, we'll hit both next year. It's a great idea, Dave. Thank you. Critical congenital heart defect, uh, unfortunately, is present in about 0.8% of all full-term newborns. And in the past, it would go undetected most of the time. And when these uh, babies would be at home, what seemed like maybe they have the flu, uh, and it was, ended up being a struggle for life. And many of these children, unfortunately, died. Tonight, we're honoring two women who have done so much to change that uh, across the globe. And uh, they each have brought their own incredible trademark genius and personality into the equation to make it happen. First, I'm going to talk about Dr. Ann Grinelli. Then I want to talk about Anna Marie Serenin. <laughs> uh, who was that? <laughs> that was a good one. All right. But um, notice the guys did not get that. Um, and then I'd like to ask them both to come up here, and we're going to present them the award and let them both uh, speak as long as they like and whatever they want to say. But uh, Dr. Ann Grinelli is truly an innovator. You know, we sometimes in my world think we do all the inventing, but, but we don't. Uh, uh, people like Dr. Ann Grinelli come up with the clinical solutions that we can't even imagine when we make the tools we make. Uh, so. Her hypothesis was that if she looks at the difference between the preductal and postductal limb of a baby, a full-term baby, if there's more than 3% difference in saturation, then they probably have something congenitally uh, not quite right with their heart. And she did a very large-scale study to prove that. And then she went on to publish about it and went on to talk about it everywhere she could. And the news eventually got to Anna Marie, uh, who you all know is another force of nature. And uh, Anna Marie tirelessly fought to make Dr. Anne Grinelli's research the standard of care amongst uh, all hospitals that are doing newborn uh, deliveries. So she went to Congress. She gave talks, flew everywhere, did everything that humanly is possible. And 
she could have easily said, I'm busy with my family. She has this beautiful daughter who has some uh, challenges uh, and uh, she could have just stayed out of it. And I don't think CCHD screening today would be a standard. But instead, she fought for it. She taught her daughter how to enjoy her childhood without worrying about anything except looking at her mom and seeing what a great leader uh, she was and an inspirational person in all our lives and I'm sure in Eve's life. So tonight I'm really happy to ask uh, both Anna Marie and Anne to come up here to accept our humanitarian award and thank them for the amazing work that they've done. But I forgot to say one thing, some facts. The US now, 99% of the newborns are screened for CCHD screening. And in Dr. Anne Grinelli's country, Sweden, I think they began doing full screening first. 100% are being screened. And Anna Marie and Anne are taking it everywhere, to China, to Far East Asia, and all over Europe. And I think before the end of, by 2020, I've got a feeling every country will be doing CCHD screening. So Anne, Anna Marie, please come on up. We're humbled by your work, thank you. Well, uh, I'm so, so honored to be standing here tonight beside you, Anna Marie, and together with you all. I contribute this amazing, amazing award to every single person that have worked and fought for this cause, researchers, advocates around the globe. Thank God you knocked on our door. Words from a grateful family. The first family that we detected with CCHD screening. Actually, it was before screening because this was the first study to evaluate the method. And we were literally knocking on the doors on the newborn nurseries and asking if the parents wanted to participate in the study. And this family said yes. And they had a beautiful child with no symptoms and that baby was discovered to have CCHD. So they were in grief, but yet thankful for this. And I'm so fortunate <laughs> Thank you. to have been a part of the journey from the very beginning through the studies and onwards to implementation, implementation and advocacy. Because my colleagues discovered that we had a problem at our hospital. They felt that more and more babies were leaving newborn nurseries without being detected. They came back with a circulatory collapse. So they did a retrospective study to see if that was true. And yes, we had a problem. 28% of the babies with life-threatening heart disease left hospital without a diagnosis. So the human eye cannot detect these, but the machines can. The technology, the improvements of technology can do. And we need that help. We need that help. So I want to thank a lot of people. And um, I'm going to name two of the ones that without them, I wouldn't be standing here today. And the first one is my professor, Ingrid Osman Smith, who encouraged me. Uh, and applied for all the research grants that made the research possible. And then I want to thank Jim. So I'm so honored and humbled to receive this award. 
and uh, thank you. Well, without Dr. Grinelli, there is no um, advocacy for CCHD screening that I know, and so I don't believe in coincidences. There is a reason I think our third child came into the world at just about the same time as Anne's research was starting to see the light of day, and as the technology that had been around for a couple decades already um, got into the hands of a few really smart people who figured out a way to make it work really well on tough patients like newborns. So all of that sort of converged at the same time. And uh, I wish Eve were awake <laughs> right now so she could be here to give Joe a hug. I know you said no more awards, but you got a drawing. <laughs> so. <laughs> so um, it's, it's, it's our family, and then um, I asked her who was in the hospital bed because it wasn't a baby, and she said, that's daddy because he hasn't been in the hospital yet. <laughs> so, sorry about Isn't that. Isn't daddy a doctor? <laughs> no, this no. is the doctor, and there's this. Yeah, daddy. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, um, but uh, to Anne's point, I think... Because of um, all of her um, uh, sort of pioneering work, there were a few of us that were able to embark upon what has become the greatest privilege of my life after having children, and that is to work alongside um, the likes of Anne. And I, I would ask like the number of either clinicians or um, researchers, even in this room, that have had their hand somehow into newborn medicine or CCHD screening to stand up, but I think you'd maybe see about a third of this room stand up because it's that important and it has touched that many people. And so um, I am just so personally and profoundly grateful to all of the clinicians and the nurses and the researchers that have um, cheered this this advocacy on and, and supported the work, even when it get knee deep in policy. And if there's um, anything I can say to you today to convince you that it worked, let it be that there are about 5,200 parents tonight in the United States that will be able to hug and kiss their babies, just like me, good night that wouldn't otherwise have been able to do that without this test. So keep an eye out for um, a paper coming out soon from the CDC that will show um, by comparing states in the United States before the mandate for critical congenital heart disease screening and after. Um, that there was a 30% improvement in detecting babies that are otherwise going home from the nursery, and that just backs up everything Anne found for us seven or eight years ago. So that's coming out really soon. In one month's time, I will have the great privilege to be back in Beijing working on our project there and doing a roundtable with the China CDC, who will announce their policy statement to screen all 18 million of their newborns every year with pulse oximetry. Thank you again um, to Anne, and really, I, she's <laughs> my sister now. I love her so much. And Joe, thank you for being a leader. I commit to you that I will always call and pester you if there's something that needs to be built that's going to help newborns. <laughs> thank you so much for your leadership. Thanks for your leadership. All right, thanks. Thank you. Can we get a picture?